Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Am Haas, and with me here is Team 8365, the Gear Masters from New York. They're the five times uh, Inspire recipient at the New York State Championship. They had a great run in Houston, won the Motivate Award uh, as well. Just really, really fantastic robot. I'm excited to go through it, how the Pixel goes all the way through the robot, and how they've developed such an efficient machine. All that coming up on First Updates Now. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay guys, so I guess my first question for you is, last year obviously you had a very deep run in Houston, I think making it through the uh, Franklin Division Finals at least, uh, or winning the Franklin Division Finals, I remember, uh, and doing very well. So coming into center stage, what was your approach to the game in general? Yeah, so um, at the beginning of the season, we started by setting our design philosophy on what our robot wanted to accomplish. So we had four basic design principles for our entire robot was to keep it compact and keep it, make sure we're, uh, we're able to go through the stage door under 12 inches. And then we want to complete all of the tasks of the game, including drone and hang, as well as scoring pixels. And we wanted to reduce that cycle time to as low as possible. And then we also wanted to make sure to keep our robot as orange as possible and it's aesthetically pleasing. Awesome, yeah. So starting with that uh, intake and the pixel path, uh, walk us through your intake, the different degrees of freedom, and then we'll jump into specific questions. Yes, yeah, so our intake has four degrees of freedom with um, with the extension of linear slides up to 38 inches here. And then we call our second degree of freedom our arm, which is uh, this axis right here. And then we go into our third degree of freedom, of which is our wrist. Okay. And allowing us to pivot the angle of the intake basket. And then we have our fourth degree of freedom, which is our um, intake surgical tubing and counter roller mm -hmm. and yeah. so what, and so with that with that did you guys decide to have like all four degrees of freedom right from the beginning of the season or was it like you had a couple of them and then added one later as the season progressed yeah we uh from the beginning of the season we we noticed that we needed the four degrees of freedom mm -hmm. because of the fact that we needed to pick from intake from the stack mm -hmm. so we needed to be able to keep make sure that our intake basket is parallel to the ground using the wrist okay and i see one servo up here where is the other like servo or actuator for the wrist itself the wrist itself is under this cover right okay here. very cool very cool yeah and so now talking a little bit uh, about sensors i see a lot of wiring going on around here but it's you know very neatly kept so what sensors do you have in your intake and how do you use them yeah, so we have uh, two distance sensors here right on the intake. So what this does, it will add automatically detect the pixels once they're inside of the basket. Mm -hmm. And then it will automatically go into a transfer position mm -hmm. and transfer into our outtake basket. So it's just one button for us, for the driver, to extend, retract, and transfer. Yeah, awesome. And now moving more towards the, the uh, base and body of your robot, I see you guys have uh, an ultrasonic sensor here, uh, as well as, you know, like this pixel-shaped uh, 3D printed part here. So what's going on and how do you use that? Okay, so um, we added this 3D printed part for our autonomous for the purple pixel. Um, so at first we actually used our intake um, to outtake the pixel um, and we just extended and dropped it in the correct position. Um, but we noticed that with that we had some air um, where it would sometimes get spit out by the um, by the surgical tubing and then mm -hmm. would not be placed as accurately. So we actually added this instead. Um, and now just drive to the position. Mm -hmm. And then we actually have two different cameras that we use. Um, so this one we use to detect where we put our team element. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the back side we have another camera that detects April tags to align to the designation. I, I see, okay, so it's not an ultrasonic sensor, yeah, it's, it's actually a camera, a camera. okay, exactly. my bad. So now going on to your guys' transfer, once you have picked up the pixels, walk us through the transfer path and then we'll get into the specifics. Yeah, so once we have a uh, pixel inside of our intake basket, we're gonna go into a transfer position for our intake, which is basically it will turn uh, about 135, 180 uh, degrees, and then it will deposit right into the outtake basket mm -hmm. using this polycarbonate plate ramp mm -hmm. as attached to our intake basket and just slide right in 
into our outtake basket with the help of the surgical tubing spin takes. Sure, and as far as like consistency uh, is concerned with this mechanism, what were some of the challenges you faced and what do you think were some of the biggest improvements you made to overcome those? Yeah, so we, ha we spent a lot of time working on this transfer. And so one thing we noticed was that uh, we needed to make sure that our outtake basket was at the same position every time. Mm -hmm. So then we added these hard stops right here for our outtake baskets to rest on. And so that ensures our consistent transfer for both uh, for when intaking pixels and transferring into our outtake. Yeah, I think hard stops is something we've seen from a lot of the really top teams in ensuring consistency in their transfers. Now, going on to the deposit, let's start with the arm uh, and the end effector mechanism. I noticed you guys have some springs going on there. So walk us through again, like the degrees of freedom and how you have the adjustability uh, throughout that mechanism. Yeah, so our outtake um, consists of an arm and then what we call an elbow and then a wrist with the um, spring uh, spring that allow us to basically conform to the outtake uh, out to the backdrop. Mm -hmm. And so what this passive mechanism does, it allows us to place pixels from any angle. And so it really gives us a lot of versatility when uh, a robot is inside of trying to score and then we're just able to score right around them. Sure, and so again, like with this, is this something you've had like since your first competition? Was this added in preparation for Worlds? Uh, walk us through that. Yeah, so initially for our first qualifier, we just had this arm and an elbow, but we noticed that we weren't able to uh, get the full maximum usage of the springs because mm -hmm. of the distance between the distance of reach was too short. Mm -hmm. So then we added this wrist mechanism here that allows us to get about six inches of reach and allows us to be clear of any of the wing nuts on the backdrop yeah. and allows us to act effectively use the springs on that outtake. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. And just uh, from dropping the pixels, I can see you guys have like two small latches with backs on micros there. And, you know, we've seen a lot of teams that decide to add like a, a twist mechanism yeah. so that they can orient the pixels in any direction. I don't see that directly. Was there a conscious reason you guys chose not to do it or was it just a result of the design or something? Yeah, it was uh, pretty much a result of design because one of the big challenges for us was the transfer. So we found this transfer to be very consistent for us. And so from there, we were able to basically um, iterate with the outtake and using these independent servos, as well as having these servos up top, which allow us to secure the pixels in place of the outtake basket mm -hmm. and allow us to basically full send all of the servos without ever having to worry that the pixels will fall out of the basket on the wrong side. I see. So then you actually have like four micros you're yes. using for the pixels, two for each. Yes. Okay, makes sense. Now, talking about your end game, I feel like I saw very early in the season you yes. guys released some drone testing footage. Yes. So definitely you've put a lot of work into that. Why don't you talk about some of the steps you took to make sure your drone was as consistent as possible? So originally, earlier in the season, we started off, we did robot in 30 hours. Mm -hmm. And originally, the fastest idea was building a flywheel. But we found that design to be very battery dependent. And because we have an extension and all these other motors running, we found that, oh, we may not get consistent drone shooting. So instead, we moved on to a passive firing mechanism. So on our hang here, you'll see that we have this string here. And there's actually, we have a pin, which is actually an Allen key, plugged into the back of this sled here so that when the hang reaches a certain angle, it pulls, it will pull out and then it will fi passively fire the drone. So, watch out. Yeah, that, that that's really cool. And like, as far as iterations go, would you say this is like your third, fourth, like how long did it take you to come up with this design? So the original design was, um, we, we did iterate through this several times, depending mm -hmm. on like, oh, do we tie, we had it, Currently, we use a whole singular rubber band, but mm -hmm. back then we had we actually cut the rubber band. We would tie it, mm -hmm. but we found that oh, there would be differentiation on based off who ties the rubber band. Yeah, and then we would have to retie it because we do drone testing. Then different drones would perform differently. Sure, and we also minimized the size of the drone significantly. It used to be like a full length, a uh, significant full piece of paper. Mm -hmm. We reduced it to a half size piece of paper in order to get a consistency, and we saw there's a lot of consistent zone ones. Yeah, awesome. At well, Wolves. Gear Masters, thank you guys so much. You know, you guys always built such fantastic looking and more importantly working robots it's really impressive seeing how they run on the field so thank you guys so much for this interview reporting for first updates now i'm Abbas, and this is team 8365 the gear masters this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following
Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.